how are you doing? And I hope well. And for myself, hey, this has been a great day today. I had a lot of little projects. You know how those little projects are. You get enough things, you know, that, that build up that you got to get done. And it gets stressful. Well, I got a lot of things done today. I got a lot accomplished. And I am tired, but it's a good tired. It's a long, hot day, but I got a lot done. And we had a nice little thunderstorm about an hour ago, and the rain cooled things off, and now we just got a gorgeous summer evening. And we got a surprise waiting on us. When I was busy today, my local gun shop called, and the rifle that I'd ordered came in. I hadn't looked at it yet. I'm assuming it came in. I don't know what's in this case. I know what's supposed to be in this case. And by the title of this video, you know what's supposed to be in this case. But we're fixing to open the case and take a look here. And we're going to go in depth on this one. This, this one's special. So let's see what we got. Well, it was packaged well. <laughs> And there we go. Oh, that's a gorgeous rifle. That's pretty sweet there. All right, let's put this on the stand and let's take a good look here and see what we got. By the title of the video, y'all know what this is. It's a FN Supreme, which is a M98 miles of action. And it's, it is a true miles of action. There were a couple of modifications made to this one from the original M98 that we'll talk about in just a moment. But before we get into that, I, I want to give you a little history on FN just because so many people just don't know much about them and it's worth knowing. Okay, so it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. Okay, FN, Belgium company, and they started in, I, I believe, 1889, thereabouts. And what happened, a, a group of different arms manufacturers got together, I believe it's 12 of them, and they built a brand new state-of-the-art facility. And the first thing they did was made miles of rifles for the Belgian army. Well, then they got sued. <laughs> like a lot of people at the time, uh, Mauser wasn't too happy about everybody, you know, copyright infringement or patent infringement, excuse me. And um, FN got sued. They lost the lawsuit just like the U.S. government got sued and lost the lawsuit for making the 1903 Springfields, which were another copy of the Mauser. Everybody recognized the, the Mauser M98, that was the action. All right, so no surprise that everybody would go copying it. And earlier Mauser, same thing. Well, the new FN plant, state-of-the-art facility, they didn't have anything to make. They couldn't make Mausers and with all the legal stuff, um, uh, basically some Germans ended up controlling the company and they made sure, you know, most of the new production went to Germany. Can't, can't blame them there. Well, FN started to diversify. They started looking at making other things and they made other things. They made motorcycles, cars, bicycles. I mean, they had to do something with this huge, giant manufacturing plant. and it, it wasn't making guns at the time, or not many of them. So they sent an, an executive over to the United States to look at, you know, new ways of making bicycles. And he went to Hartford, Connecticut, which the Colt plant just happened to be there. And he just happened, he called it his fate you know, divine intervention, whatever you want to call it. He ran into a gun designer there. 
And the gun designer, you know, there they were, FN. They didn't have anything to make and needed a designer. Well, that gun designer, he was getting aggravated with the American gun manufacturers. He wanted to make some state-of-the-art stuff. Well, that's expensive. And it takes a state-of-the-art facility with skilled craftsmen to do it. Well, these two, they just hit it off, right? I mean, the gun designer and the exec from FN, they just hit it off. I mean, just instantly. The gun designer was John Browning. All right. And they began a partnership after that that it lasted literally up until the day John Browning died. He died at the FN plant in Belgium. All right. So you know, pretty extensive relationship there. And when you see made in Belgium on, all, you know, so many of the great Browning farms that were made by FN, I mean, that's, you know, a, a really extensive partnership there. And just to add to that, FN ended up owning Browning, or at least the, you know, USA, I ain't going to try to figure out all the corporate divisions and everything else, but FN came to own Browning. And FN also owns Winchester today. FN's still here, and they own Browning and Winchester, and FN's also still making military firearms as well as commercial firearms. Same thing back then, they made military and commercial. This was a commercial M98 Mauser action. And not only did FN make, you know, their own brand FN products. They also made actions for a lot of other people at that time. So I believe it was Sears used FN actions, um, or quite a few. And your first Brownings, when I believe 1960, when Browning came out with the high power rifle, they were using FN actions. Eventually some Seikos, or eventually all Seiko, I think, but start with they were using FN actions. Again, if it said made in Belgium, it's FN. So FN has made quality firearms for a long time and that's something they were they were famous for was quality firearms and that's why John Browning fell in love with the facility and the company. It was a state of art facility, but more importantly they had craftsmen there that knew how to make firearms. And that Browning, he needed that. He was making some state-of-the-art stuff at the time. The Auto 5, Browning 12-gauge, Browning high-power pistol. Yeah. He made, he had some absolutely brilliant designs, and FN made that happen. And, of course, the, the Mauser 98 action. I mean, back in the day, there, there were two great, actions. It's either a Model 70 Winchester, and we're talking your pre-64s, which were a variation of the M98, and the M98. Alright, so you know you got the M98 action here, and it's a lot of different companies made the M98 action over the years. You, uh, you still have Zastava making them. Alright, so a lot of companies have made these. FM was one of the best, one of the, as far as craftsmanship and so forth, FM was one of the best to make the M98 action. And it shows, I, I can see it here in, in this one. I, I'm just, I am enjoying this right now. This is every little detail I'm seeing on this rifle. I'm just really impressed with it. And I saw this online, and you, you know how that is with pictures online. You never know what you're going to get. I'll be honest, I thought the stock was going to need to be redone when I was looking at it. I thought, okay, well, this will make a great project anyway, and it'll be a gorgeous rifle once I refinish the stock. This stock's gorgeous right now. I, I wouldn't touch this. Someone took care of this rifle, and the, the craftsmanship in this, I mean, I the checkering, everything. I mean, this is just a gorgeous rifle. The, the checkering, it was pressed. This, this wasn't hand cut. I'm not seeing the, the tips on the diamonds.
but it was done really well. Of course, it could just be worn over the years. I, I can't say for sure on this one. Uh, it, it appears as though these diamonds are just flat. I'm going to have to research that one. And that's part of the fun of an old rifle like this, is doing the research. I've got a lot to learn about this one in particular, and there's a few things I already know. All right, I, I know, all right, we've got the side safety here. The original M98 actions, the safety was on the bolt. One of the best, the best safety ever, because on the original M98 actions, when, when you put it in safe, it didn't block the trigger, it literally blocked the firing pin. So there, there was no better safety ever made. But when you, for ergonomic reasons, FN moved the safety to the side here. And Seiko made the safety and trigger for this one, by the way. And so, you know, there, there's some quality components on this. All right, so we've, they did that in the mid-50s. And so we, we know we're mid-50s on this one. It's got the FN logo still on the action on top of the action and they started phasing that out in the early 50s right, so we have all right i see the proof marks and we have a z and you can also see here that this is in 30 out 6 I don't think I mentioned that part. Great cartridge, and it just seemed fitting for a classic rifle like this. Okay, that's how the FN did the date codes on their actions. The serial number, let's see, we got the serial number here, so I might can do a serial number lookup. But with, with that Z on here, the way they did the, the date code was they used Greek letters on the early ones. And with that Z, we had, uh, they started producing these in 1948, commercial ones. All right, so, and they went alpha, beta, gamma. All right, so this should have been 1953 with the Z for zeta. But I, didn't think they put a serial number on them at that time. So, hey, that's, that's another mystery and something else for me to dig into. And that action is just as slick as you would expect a Mauser action to be. There we go. I knew it wasn't that complicated. This bolt face looks gorgeous. That's a little tip. Anytime you're looking at a, you know, purchasing a firearm, a used one, especially an older one, look at the bolt face. All right, if you see it's, you know, full of holes, beat up, you know, rough looking, you might want to stay away from that one unless it's just for collecting. But again, I, like I said, I plan on shooting this. This is all my guns, they, they get used. This bolt face looks, I mean, it looks new. It's drilled and tapped for a scope, and the iron sights were here, and they used screws to fill that in, and it's got a Williams peep sight on it. Which, I mean, Williams made some great peep sights. And this is going to be a tough one. I, I'm going to shoot it some with this on here just to try it but I'm probably going to put a scope on here later on. Just This will be next year sometime, maybe. Just because my eyes aren't what they used to be. Oh, this rifle's gorgeous. All right, I've got some inlays here on the, the stock. And I don't know if, you know, a custom smith somewhere did that or not. But they did an excellent job on that. That is gorgeous. 
I'm just really impressed with the finish on here. Somebody added this recoil pad. It, it wasn't fitted the greatest. It's close. It might be factory, but I'm, I'm guessing someone added that. And the proportions on this rifle, I mean, just... Oh, yeah, they, they did good making this. And a, a lot of guns, especially from this time period, they, when you look at them from a distance, they, they look bulky, oversized. But when you actually hold them, they're a lot smaller than what you would think. It's, I don't know how to describe it. Um, it's just, again, everything's just smaller than what you would think, and it's you know almost a fraction of the size of what it appears looking at it from a distance. The bottom metal looks really good on this. And I don't see the release for the floor plate. So that'll be something for me to dig into and figure out. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and pull this out of the stock. Take a little closer look. I'm wondering if the, the checkering got sanded down and the gun refinished at some point, like when the inlays were added, if they were added. And with the serial number on the barrel, I'm thinking that's got to be later than 53. Hey, that's like I said, that's part of the fun with these old rifles is figuring them out. And I know it can't be that old because I didn't make the Supreme that many years. And we've got the serial number here in the stock, matches the barrel and the receiver. And we have a Z on the stock also. A little cross block in here for the Recoil lug. I can see the mistakes made on the checkering. The checkering, I am certain, was hand cut. I mean, just with the mistakes I'm seeing here in the lines. But the diamonds are flat, so I'm guessing they got sanded down. I can't swear to it. I'm going to have to check into it, but that's, that's going to be my guess. This was hand cut checkering. And somebody refinished it at some point, added the inlays, because I've never seen the inlays, which that doesn't mean anything. I am no expert by any means on, on these older rifles. And notice how simple this is. I mean, it, the, the trigger, simple as it can be, the, all of it's simple. But your greatest designs are simple. I mean, now this... The new rifles today, the budget rifles, they're simple, but they don't have the machining this has. They don't, they don't have the extra touches, and that's what made these old rifles so great. And it's, it, it's not just me looking back and, you know, saying, hey, you know, the old stuff's great, new stuff sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's not that at all, especially as I get some a few years on me. <laughs> it's the workmanship that went into these, you, you don't see that in farms now. And all you have to do is pick one of these up and you, you recognize that right off. I mean, it's, it, it jumps out at you. And that, that's a shame. I mean, it's just, you know, that, our, our things today are, I guess, more efficient, maybe, but they're not as nice, generally. You just have to hold it to appreciate it, to, to see the details in it, and this is functional. I mean, this is, this is a fine rifle here. Folks, I can't think of a better way to end this day than sharing this with y'all, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. 
if you didn't hit the like button, let YouTube know you like gun videos. And if you want to see future videos, including me carrying this to the range and setting it up at some point, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And I think that about covered it for the FN Supreme. God bless and have a good day.